Um, what I love about you, Nick, is that first of all, you are very loving, you are caring, you are, you are supportive. The respect that you have in the family to, to make sure that you take care of us, you take care of the kids, you make sure that um, we are fine, we are well taken care of. And you love me more than I love you. And that makes me love you more than I love you every single day. The love changes, it becomes more. And your laughter. So I would say I love you because you are my superwoman. But most of all, it's the love that you show me daily. Yeah, the support and the mother that you are to my kids. It's, it's, it's so amazing. I couldn't trade it for anything else uh, because I believe in building a family and a healthy one. Of course. My name is Miran Baloi and this is my fiance, Dinzalo uh, Shpalana. Hi guys. Uh, my name is Dinjalo Shpalana. Uh, I'm from Tani. And then uh, the dude, the guy sitting next to me. <laughs> yeah, he's saying he's my fi I'm his fiance. Yeah, I'm not sure. Your husband. What changed? I'm your wife. You must show me. <laughs> oh, but I'm your wife. <laughs> we have known each other for years. For years, uh, I'm not sure since when, but in Goa, Goa, um, I used to visit my grandmother. And then I think when I started mid high school, which was I can't remember from which year. 2006, 2005, somewhere there. Yeah. Was, I was doing grade seven in 2005, if not mistaken. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, the chick next to me came, he used to come visit around, uh, like she said, the granny's place. Me, me being me, being shy, uh, I ignored it. You know when you have feelings for someone but you ignore it because you're looking at the fact that uh, she is too beautiful, she's um, way out of your league. Uh, let me put it like that. Uh, little did I know that she's... Uh, She's the sweetest, um, she's kind, and she's accommodative. So every weekend she used to come and then I used to look at her from a distance. Uh, I don't remember what, what happened for us to be together. So in... 2011. 2011, yes. I came to Pretoria, I went to Val. But I used to visit my, my, uh, my uncle in Pretoria, Sangsai all the time then um before that i can't remember he sent me a message on facebook it was before it was inbox before. yes inbox no, yeah. yes he sent me an inbox he greeted me it was like uh do you remember me and i was like i don't even know you then he tried to explain uh, this is where i stay and all of that so okay i uh, we started chatting on, on inbox and then but it will be like a text like hi hi how are you <laughs> then after two years hi hi how are you so it was not like constant uh, chatting so after that uh, every time when i went home i would i think it was after what's happening yes, yes, yeah. yes. So, so after yes, that i remember when we exchanged numbers mm -hmm. and then you were like yeah although i don't know you but um, here's my number. Let's let's try and get to know each other. Mm. I, I, it was it was nice because it's it's something that I've been waiting for. And then we started talking, talking, and then on WhatsApp and stuff. Being at distance, felt like I I had it, like yeah, he didn't say anything. Hey, like so I took him as a friend, a brother, because Hello. Namina had someone else at that time, so which I didn't know. Which I didn't know. <laughs> Yes, he didn't know anything. Then she 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 came. Oh, I'm out to move back to China after after school, after university, during holidays. And then she came, and then we, we decided to meet. <laughs> so yes, guy, uh, he tries to kiss me. Me, 
then I'm like, okay, I'm coming now. <laughs> and then I disappeared. <laughs> um, until we met again after years. That was the last time you saw me. For, for me, it was a bit uh, shocking, but I later understood her, her principles. Could you know what? If I'm not with you, there are certain things I can't do. Unlike, um, well, certain people who just go with the flow, mm. you understand? Mm. So I respected that. And then obviously I kept my distance after after she told me for the flow. What we wanted to, to try. It's not nice because um, I'm with someone, I'm with someone. and I'm getting married next year. So you were getting engaged first yes, and then yes. getting married um, the following year. So I later on sent uh, you an invite on inbox inviting me to my wedding. She, she got married. I respected the marriage like that. So fast forward. Things happened. Yeah. We, lost, uh, we also lost, uh, we never communicated that much. It was a hi, hi, how are you? Yes, yes. That's yeah. it. Mm. Then. Um, but there was that element of, um, you know, when your soulmate is a soulmate, guys, you can't, you can't run away from that. There was that element of wanting to meet. All the time. Almost all the time. Like, okay, let's go out for coffee, let's go out for like, drinks, like nice drinks let's go out for lunch let's go out for breakfast and stuff happened. it never happened somehow it never happened yeah then uh, whatever happened happened and then i remember i on the 31st of july i was saying goodbye to my marriage then on the first of august i called him Guys, this is literally 24 hours <laughs> after she she got divorced. After the papers were signed. I don't know what she was going through, but I, I, I honestly don't know. But immediately after I got the text, yeah, uh, it's finalized. So, uh, you know, those words on, on its own, they mean something. And then I pick up it's a call. Mixed. I call. Like, what's finalized? <laughs> like, yeah, my divorce. What? Good shot. So I was so excited to an extent that um i even the following day i organized a meeting with her I, I i couldn't wait any longer guys that's that's how i wanted it so much i couldn't wait any longer and then she agreed fortunately she agreed mm, which was in uh, 2019 2019 and today 2021 we are blessed with three kids three in two years in two years time yes so um what i've learned uh, especially in life, marriage and relationship is that um, your soulmate could be married. Don't lose hope. Uh, the person that you love <laughs> might be with someone else, um, but that doesn't mean you should stop loving, uh, especially other people. Try this thing. Uh, where where you know when you have failed, at least you failed trying. It's unlike saying, yeah, marriage is bad, but you haven't tried it. Yeah, marriage. You just hear people saying, yeah, uh, marriage is bad. I don't wish to get married. Was, they have their own if experience. If it was that bad, I wouldn't have gotten married again. My point exactly. Yeah. yeah so. So for me, um, I want to have experience because I'm talking about two different people who are way different. I ex I'm experiencing something different compared to what I was in before. Because right now, I've, I I don't know how to explain a soulmate, but for me, I feel like I, I'm married to my best friend. True. We we joke a lot. We had like yes, people do say we need to fight. It makes yeah, those are instigators. You can't just go around <laughs> looking for fights if they are not. They are not there. Like we hardly, we, but we do. Mm. But we, like it's according to him, he doesn't call it fight because it's it's. Nothing serious. But disagreement. It's just disagreements. But there's nothing that I can say that no, it, it will make us decide whether are we still together or not. So we joke a lot. I have no oh, other best friend. Is no, he's crazy. Like I'm being honest. He's, he's I, I, th crazy. I think I think she she activated a different part of me where that actually allows me to express fully who I am. I, I don't have limits. Um, 
spanking her in front of kids. It's, it's, I don't feel shy. I'm not afraid because I know it's not like she'll be angry and grumpy uh, about it. The kids are like, then why are you beating mommy? <laughs> <laughs> so the they kids don't understand. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. he's not beating me. He's spanking me. So what's that? You will understand when later. I've picked up two things from what you've said. Um, so you said that you had a crush on her since you were in grade seven. For me, I consider that being very young. And right now, the states have recently come out saying that there is about 23,000 kids in Gauteng alone that are currently pregnant. So what advice would you give parents? Right now, you are also parents to three beautiful girls. So what advice would you give them? It, also, coming from your experience as, as a boy, I think I would love to hear more from like a boy experience. You had feelings from a very young age. True, true, yeah. Um, looking at this, uh, these uh, things that are happening nowadays, it's very sad that it's it's mostly committed by men. My understanding is that a, a boy child cannot impregnate a, a girl child while they're very very young. Those people they know hardly know anything about sex or, or relationships. But although they have feelings, um, I feel like us as parents, uh, especially the the guys. We need to focus more on grooming the young ones, especially the boys, making sure that we teach them that a woman is to be respected, um, a man is to have a family, and the only thing that builds a family is a man and a woman. And out of that comes a beautiful family whereby a man has to protect all the time and advise um, the family because according to the Bible, the man is the head of the family. and. Uh, without the head, the family has no direction. Hence, we see a lot of um, people or a lot of families torn apart or, or separated because of um, lack of um, headship in the family. Yeah. Um, Tinjalo, you, 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 uh, I'm still amazed by your story. You literally called him 24 hours after you signed your divorce papers. There are so many women out there that have been divorced. They've lost their self-worth. So many of them actually just don't believe that they would remarry. For you, what do you think pushed you to want to fall in love again? How did you open yourself up to being loved again? For me, I, love is beautiful. And, and it's more beautiful if you share it with someone else that loves you back. Maybe them who loves you more than you love them. So I, I still had hope. And honestly, I don't know what made me to tell him. I, I, I don't want to lie. I don't know because we hardly talk. It's not like I was chatting to him the previous day and I was like, hey, it happened. No. And he never told. I even forgot who he once proposed or he still loves me. I didn't even think about it because the day he told me that he loved me, I didn't say I loved you back. It took time for me to say I love you because I think I was still dreaming him, checking what I do. Is he really say, does he really mean it now or is it because now he sees that I'm free? Then he tells me that he loves me. But for me, I was like, ah, let me try. Let me, there's no harm in trying. Let me see because even though I signed the previous day and then the following day I called him, I was out. Uh, like I already moved on. Because I prepared myself while I was still inside. Well, you know what? It's done. There's nothing I can do. Let me rather prepare myself so that once I'm out, it won't. Yes, I'm out completely. I don't have time to sit down and cry and be like, why me and all those. So I healed while inside because the reality age, was reality. Yeah. It was like, hmm. it's, a, it's the end. Why should I worry about it? So there's still hope. And. He gave me that hope and I don't regret and my problem is all the time I feel like but this guy asked me out before I even got married. I was like it seems like I disobeyed God some way. That's how I feel. I feel like I took the wrong path and God was like you know what those are your consequences follow them. Who's that guy in the Bible? Uh, John. John, yes, yes. The story of John actually <laughs> relates. Yeah. So God I was supposed to go to to Nani. I went to Tashish. <laughs> to your own so, yes, the fish came, and then I went back. So that's me. So 
I don't know. I honestly don't know. It, it, uh, I just went with the flow, and I don't regret. And one thing that made me to believe more is because I would remember, oh, this guy, he has been loving me for like a very long time, for years now. It means he truly loves me. So let me just give him a chance. Yeah, did you hear that, guys? Keep on pushing perseverance. Be patient, even if she's married. So <laughs> hang in there. Relax, 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 relax. Take your time. Wow, that's wow. That is um, truly an amazing story, and I think it speaks more about what this channel is about: second chances, allowing yourself to to to, to you know um, live again, love again, um, do whatever you wanted to do initially, and yeah, living a path. So now you get back together and almost immediate. I mean, 2019, that was the year before last. That was like two years ago and already you had three kids in. Yeah, yes. you, <laughs> you went fully in. Eh? Yeah. You went when, fully when, when, when given an opportunity, you must capitalize. You must make sure that you, you cover all the tracks. No gaps, no vacuum. <laughs> so you made sure that two of my uh, but in December life, I, I never enjoyed them with, without being pregnant. So 2019 December, 2020 December. So yeah, it happened, and all of them were shocked. Like honestly, it was not like we planned to have kids. I remember because with my past experience is um, I have uh, endometriosis. So for me, conceiving uh, it's 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 difficult. Even with uh, my firstborn, it was very difficult. I had to go through uh, operations. Mm. So I told myself, and I, I used to tell him, God, you know what, there's no way that I'm going to get pregnant. Not anytime soon. Even though I've been praying and asking God for another child, but I think I lost hope somewhere. Then I gave up. And then I remember, the, uh, I knew that I was pregnant even before I tested. And even before I got sick, because I had a dream where I was like, no, name my child, name your child Mikens. Yes, yeah. Then I was like, which child? Because I'm not pregnant. Then I ignored it. When I, the following day when I started getting sick, then uh, I was scared to test. After testing, I was like, um, I, I sent him a uh, WhatsApp. I was like, guy, we are pregnant. I was so scared, number one. My parents don't know anything. They know him. So I sent my mother a WhatsApp because I, I, I couldn't talk. So I sent my mother a message. Uh, I told her, like, Mom, I'm pregnant. I don't know what to do. It was a month later, by the way. Yes. A month later, yes. after you guys started dating. Yeah. Why not? I mean, <laughs> we're still young. <laughs> yeah, it was in it September. Was, yeah. Is it? Oh, two months, yeah. Hey, I know we started in August. August the first of yeah. August. Then September, September yes. Yeah. Yeah. The following wow. month. That's when I was like, okay, I, I'm pregnant. And imagine, I tried to conceive for years with no luck. So I met this guy, boom, one year, one month, I'm pregnant. Then I was like, okay. Clearly God was like, no, you have to have more kids with, with, with your right person. Mm -hmm. So now I told my mother, and then she was like, okay, I'll tell you dad. Then she told my dad, ah, Shem, I was so scared. I thought you would be more angry. He was more happy. He was more excited. Then I don't know why I, I never asked him. Then they were like, "Okay, we need to meet this guy." Then uh, my parents drove all the way from Zani to Kempton Park to meet him. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the time for question and answer. They asked him. Okay, they asked both of us first. Yeah. Please, what is happening? And then they they. they Obviously, I had to explain my intentions, my story, and then I gave them a bit of background of where I come from, a background of how I met her, and what are my intentions going forward, which is to marry her. And then fast forward, last year, October, um, I did what had to be done. I sent the uncles, and then they did what they did, and then, yeah, here we are. So. How do you feel like having children have changed your relationship? No, change. No, nah, we should change. There's no change. You <laughs> change. So, no, like, really? Yeah. You know, you know, you know when when uh, okay. Firstly, she she was like like she was not sure what kind of a person I was in terms of building a, a family, right? Like she said, she was giving me a chance. When when Mikenzo was born, um, I had to step in 
it's a light at night sometimes she used to sleep and then I carry on uh, looking after the child and then maybe sometimes bath and then then they made uh, food for the family and stuff. No, oh, he's the sweetest. So so so, so so the support that um, she showed me first is the support that I'm transferring it back because uh, she she did a lot for me. I'm like um, I will stay behind with the baby. I would come back. I haven't cleaned. I haven't cooked. I'm a mess. I'm still wearing my pajamas, and by that time it's six p.m. Mm. And he by would, the way, those pajamas were still fine. Because <laughs> it's not like she changed. She <laughs> still looked beautiful. So he would come back, clean uh, while preparing food. After that, put water for me to bath. Our bath will be looking at the baby. Like, I can't remember at night, do I make bottles? Yeah. Like, it's so difficult for me when I go home because I'm not used to making bottles at night. So I have to send around people to make bottles because I, I don't make bottles and I don't ask him it's something that he does and yo I'm so grateful because the support is way more than I expected or way more than what uh, most men do because it's way I, above I, th I think uh, uh, the stigma around men being men in the house coming back with the newspaper opening it or watching news as to we, we need to shy away from mm -hmm. that um, ladies are people too. We, women are, are people too. And as much as we guys pretend as if we don't know how to do these things, it's, it's high time we start doing them for our wives and especially for our kids. Because you, you, but in, um, you, when you are helping, you're not just helping for me, you're not just helping me, okay. uh, you're also helping the kids and you're also helping yourself. Too and and uh, look, at the kids are watching. Oh, okay. At home, it's not only mom who's doing the dishes. It's not only mom who cooks. Which is, which is they will grow up with that mentality yes. of saying, okay, cooking, I can cook. Why and now I that care? we have a son, the boy must also know that. Okay, since Papa does dishes, I must also learn how to do them. True. Yeah. Mm, so it's not and that's my responsibility to teach as a as a as a guy. So uh, nothing has changed. I think we are more yeah. on fire. You got closer. We yes, got closer. Yes, yeah. closer. Way closer. I love it. I love it. There are a lot of young couples that the divorce rates are very, very high right now. More especially um, amongst young couples. What advice would you give young couples? For me, um, it would be like what I would give it would be uh, more of sort of what uh, an experience for me something that i noticed or uh, something that have caused the marriage caused the, the divorce and and it's not it, it's happening in most marriages number one is um i will urge husbands men to open up because um uh, what i've learned previous uh, in the past is that men tend to keep their pains their head inside and not uh, share them with their wives so it's like they rather head inside die inside and at the end the day they explode the love is reducing bit by bit hence you'll find that the treatment that they'll give their wives you will ask yourself does this guy love his wife now and it's not because they don't love them it's because they've they're keeping things inside and they don't communicate so I believe uh, with communication there's a lot that that you can stop there's a lot that you can prevent no matter how hurt you are no matter how angry you are if you communicate out of love you don't have to show your headship now that you're, you're talking to me just like lovely lovingly and talk okay there's something that didn't sit well with me and then I explain okay I didn't because sometimes it, it, it might happen or okay, I hate you without knowing that I'm hurting you because as people ne, I might have married you Mary, uh, when I met you you might have been this type of person but we change and, and we it's grow, nothing yeah. that we can run away from as pe people grow people change so every time we must learn to learn each other and grow together yes I think so i can never say that that person that I, I i know from the beginning 
he is not the same person. But he's, yeah, I was, he's I was very skinny, as you can see, guys. I'm now, <laughs> I'm being fed. <laughs> <laughs> so marriage is very nice. I would I'd advise you guys to take. Um, one thing I've learned, and one thing I would want others to to take note of is that in in marriages or relationships, there are fights, mm. and there will be fights. There will continuously be fights, whether big issues or small issues. Um, what needs to be done is how do you communicate between um, out of anger or you cool down and explain the situation. I think we need to learn that uh, so that at least when I communicate, I don't hit the next person because it's going to build a everlasting fight. So communication is... It's very important. We might yeah, take it very light, but it's, it's, it's very, very important because you, you, t- you, you communicate about everything, finances, health, uh, but sex, everything you, you have to communicate about every little thing yeah that's what i've picked up from both of you the most important thing is communication communication about all the different aspects in your life there's no such thing such as a small issue everything is is important and also um there are a lot of um Dentala was married before and you were not you've never been married and there's a lot of men currently um that of the notion that they would never marry a woman who's been married before what do you think sets your wife apart from all the other women you've dated what made you feel like irrespective of her past she's the one for me um, apart, apart from her beauty uh, because i believe um, she's beautiful and i believe she's one of the beautiful people that i've met um, in life um, I, go, I got to understand her I got to know her, um, I've learned her, I've studied her and then I found out that she's, um, she's a loving person. Um, she's a strong woman based on the history, uh, based on the past experiences. Not every woman would, would set apart and say, look, I'm done, I've done this, I'm done. But she had the courage uh, to stand up and say, let me give it a try. So that separates her from a lot of uh, women. Um, on, she, she's she's uh, she's well respected. Let me put it like that. She she carries herself in a manner that describes a woman, according to me. So the way she dresses, the way she talks, the way she um, actually uh, live a life in general, because. Uh, She's a Christian, and I'm a Christian too. So I've seen and I've dated a lot of Christian girls, but they don't live up to uh, their own belief. I'm not sure if you understand. If if I say I believe in green, I cannot be uh, also believing in in blue because my uh, faith lies on green. So I tested her, and then I find that she's genuine to herself first before anyone else and then that's someone that I could trust uh, also. Marriage works. The South African law does recognize lobola as a formal form of a marriage. I would urge you as a viewer to do your own research so that you may not find yourself in a situation whereby you are made in community of property without fully understanding the consequences. Thank you for watching. Nimeranza Nguyenu.